you're going to get goosebumps. Here's why you're going to get goosebumps. We had identical results in what? In had a, well, pretend that box isn't there. Okay, good, we went away. We had identical results. That's rare. We had the same results in that kind of model that I just had up there for Hispanics, as for African Americans, as for Asian and Pacific Islanders, and Anglos. The same conclusions. Not only that, wrap your minds around this. We had the same conclusions for New Yorkers as we did people who live in LA, as we did people for Washington DC, as we did for the nation. Not only that, we reached the same conclusion for different hazards, including terrorism. And we were able to explain anywhere between 41 and 48 percent of the variation in household preparedness. So if you're trained as a physical scientist, don't freak out. That's as good as it gets in the social and behavioral sciences. If anyone explains more than that, they made a mistake. <laughs> so from a can we predict household preparedness point of view, I declare in front of you, God and anyone else who's willing to listen, we nailed it. <laughs> we actually know what motivates public readiness. And Here's what it is. Number one, and this should make you joyous. The factor that makes the biggest difference is information about getting ready. Isn't that wonderful? What if it was something you couldn't control or manipulate? What makes the biggest difference in the public getting ready? You giving them information about getting ready. You can actually turn the juice up on that or turn the juice down. And there's two kinds of information. The first kind of information is getting it from multiple sources. Getting it on the grocery bag, getting it from the coloring book the kids bring home from school, getting it from, I was gonna say, the governor's office of emergency services. <laughs> Forgive me. I so wanna call it Kalima. It sounds like a town I live close to. Getting it over multiple channels. Getting it on greasy fast food mats when you buy your lunch. Getting it on t-shirts. Uh, getting it on TV, etc. cetera. Uh, third, uh, talking about actions to take to get ready and how they cut losses. And consistency across messages. The more those multiple sources over multiple channels talk about what people should do to get ready and that there's consistency across the information that's received, the more times people get ready. Second, it's information observed, seeing others get ready. Which of these two matters the most? Seeing others get ready. But these two things together account for more ability to explain getting ready than anything else. Information drives action in two ways. Directly, by motivating people to get ready. And indirectly, by motivating people to get ready by first going through other factors. What are the other factors? It increases what people know. It increases their perception of effectiveness of taking those actions and getting them to talk about it with each other. What do I mean by that? Think about yourself and your own lives. When you're thinking about buying a new car, do you just go out and buy it impulsively? On occasion, most of the time you check it out with other people in your life. Hey, what do you think of the new Volvo? And it looks something like that. Same with this because we're talking about human beings, we're talking about how they're wired. And it looks like this. Information, verbal and read and written, and cues, seeing it, have a direct effect on action. That's the white balloons. And information and cues have an indirect effect on action by also going through knowledge, perceived effectiveness, and milling, which suggests that information about getting ready and cues about getting ready have a double whammy. 
not only a single whammy, a double whammy. There are the equations. So I'd like to suggest to you that yes, social scientists, at least the quantitative social scientists, reduce human behavior to equations. And when we invent another hazard, and we will, we always invent new hazards, what equations will predict the public getting ready for those new hazards that have yet to be invented? There they are. And in simple terms, information and cues enhance readiness actions directly and indirectly through knowledge, perceived effectiveness, and milling. By the way, I want to say I did these slides, and 12 months ago I didn't know how to do PowerPoint. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> the information to action relationship is pliable. That means we can mold it by policy and programs. So what I want to say is, for those of you who have ever wondered why the public isn't doing more to get ready, everybody look at the person on their left. Do that now. Now look at the person on your right. Okay, now get present to who's sitting in your chair. That's the reason why. The people who provide information to the public. They're in control. You're in control of how much the public gets ready. It's linear. The more information in, the more action you get out. And the less information in, the less action you get out. That's what linear means. And other things don't matter much. They may be statistically significantly related to readiness, but they don't matter much. And so when you find someone, and I know you will, who says a demographic factor is related to readiness, if you look at it closely, square the correlation, you get the amount of explained variance that, that factor explains, and it'll boil down to it explains 1% of the variance in getting ready. Whereas the information factor has explained 40% and 45% of the variance. Where do you want to put your money? Other things uh, are, but the effects aren't real and they go away and fall out when you have more sophisticated statistical analyses or that they have such little predictor, predictive value that they should be ignored. Here are some examples. Perceived risk fell out of every model. For all locations, for all subpopulations, perceiving increased probabilities for events does not increase public readiness actions. This is a hard risk for seismologists to swallow. They won't believe me even my best friends. Demographics. Now I'm pissed off the seismologist. Now I'm going to take on my own discipline, sociologists. Demographics don't really matter either. They don't really predict public readiness action taking that much. Here's an evidence-based toolkit we invented based on these findings, and before you reduce what I just presented down to a study, let me remind you, this was a study of people in New York City, of people in Los Angeles, of people in Washington, D.C., of African Americans in America, of Hispanics, of uh, Anglos, etc., and of the country as a whole. This was eight different studies. Ten steps. These are my recommendations to you your organizations, and my state. The general principle, information is the key factor that motivates the public to get ready. It works everywhere for everyone, at least in the United States. Mainstream Americans and racial and ethnic minorities. Across the country and in different cities, there's an information imperative. Richer fields of information by that we mean things like multiple sources, channels, specific content, etc. yield public readiness action taking. Recommendation step one, use evidence-based approaches. All public education and information campaigns are not equal. 